Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In this video series, I am demonstrating how you can host an email server of your own on your Raspberry Pi for free. Complementing my previous video series in which I showed you how you can host a website on your Raspberry Pi, specifically WordPress, with the traffic passing through your home router. Now, before I get on with this video, I'd just like to raise to your attention my Patreon account. The link is given here on the slide. If you're interested in accessing the videos that are available on there, which aren't available publicly on YouTube, if you'd like to get one-to-one -one support, would like to suggest content, or if you would just like to support my work, please do visit my Patreon page. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so if you've followed my series up to this point, you're in great shape. You have a website hosted via HTTPS. You have an email server running using start TLS encryption, which you've proven is applied via the email headers. You have demonstrated that you can connect and manage your emails through a third-party email client, in my case, Thunderbird, and you have applied a number of techniques to significantly reduce your exposure to incoming spam. In the previous video, we went through the tedious and in some cases boilerplate steps to install and set up Spam Assassin to help us to reduce our cross-section or exposure to incoming spam. I'm sure you'll agree it wasn't a pleasant experience to run through. It was quite long and tedious. In fact, it was my longest video. So congratulations if you saw your test emails heading into your spam box as they were supposed to. So we can adjust our picture here to be a bit more complete as follows. So it's only a small change, but it's an important one. Through changes on the Raspberry Pi, we have made our email server quite resilient to incoming spam. So one direction of our spam issue is now complete, the direction going from the internet into our email server. So we're now on the final leg of our journey through this video series. However, I have to warn you that setting up an email server to be recognized as legi legitimate uh, by major email services is not an easy journey. We'll take it steady and tick off each of the five stages we need to complete one at a time. But it is necessarily a difficult process, and it needs to be, because we need to make sure our emails are legitimate and the third-party service providers have a responsibility to make sure that they only let in emails which are legitimate. So that's absolutely fine. I'm completely happy with that. But as I say, doing it is a little bit tricky. Okay. So in today's video, we're going to look at two things. We're firstly going to investigate what tools are available to us to understand whether or not our emails are up to scratch and will meet the standards required. Then we're going to take a look at ensuring we are using a fully qualified domain for our hello greeting. This is the first step towards having our email server correctly configured. Okay, so let's get started then with the tool, the tool we're going to use to check whether or not our emails meet the standards required by modern third-party email servers. Now we're going to use a tool called mailtester.com. So open a browser and navigate there now. I'll show you what it looks like on my side. Okay, so this is what it looks like for me. So note that the URL is mail-tester.com. That's where you need to go. And when you get there, you'll see this screen or something very similar to it. And in the middle, you've got an email address. And this is what we're going to send an email to. And it'll check the email for its quality and whether or not it meets the requirements for most uh, email servers to accept as a legitimate email. Now, I should point out this service actually doesn't cover everything. Um, but it does cover most of what we need to use, sorry, most of what we need to know to ensure that our emails are up to scratch. So it's a good place to start. So what I recommend you do is you copy the email address that's provided to you. Yours will be different to mine. And you go to your email client and send an email to this address. So off screen, I've got my th <coughs> Thunderbird client open and I've clicked on write message. So that's fairly straightforward. Uh, and I've pasted in this email address into the to box and I've given it a bit of information. I've added a body. I'm just going to do that now and I'll bring this window back over for you. So I'm just going to basically draft an email. So 
this is what my email looks like. So I'm just sending it to the email address that is shown on the screen. I've put a subject in just for fun, missing cat, and then I've written an email that says, Dear James, my cat went missing last week. I was wondering if you'd seen him. Kind regards, mad cat lady. That's just for fun, but you do need to put an email in the body section um, of, your, of your email. You need to make sure there is some content here and a subject. Just because part of the assessment will be that the email seems legitimate, so you may as well write something that seems legitimate, and this for me seemed reasonable. So once that's done, click send. Okay, send the message. Excellent. So the next thing we need to do once that's been sent is then click on the button that says check your score. Now, what you will probably get is you'll get a little rowy boat here that goes across the screen. And when it's complete, you will be shown this screen. Now, because I did it just a few minutes before to make sure it did work as I expected it to, um, uh, I already have mine loaded, so I didn't see the little rowing boat graphic, but you should see that. And when it's done, you'll get a pretty horrendous score, which is weird, isn't it, when you think about it? We've set up a email, <coughs> email server. We know we can send and receive emails and everything is technically working as it should, but you can see the problem. Your, your emails are being considered incredibly bad by other third-party email servers. And there's loads of um, uh, boxes here. You can expand them um, and it'll tell you about the quality of your email, what, what spam assassin is thinking about it, um, about your authentication, um, SPF, DK, DKIM, the DMARC record. So these are basically not really that good. You need all of these to be green. Okay, so this is what we're going to work on over the next few videos is making sure that these are all ticked green and this becomes 10 out of 10. Okay, so that's the tool uh, that we're going to use. Don't worry about your score. We're going to hopefully get that up to 10 out of 10 by the end of this. Okay, so that brings an end to the first part of this video. Before I go any further though, I just want to make it clear that I have no affiliation uh, with mail-tester.com. Uh, I use it simply because I like the interface and it covers the vast majority of uh, elements that we need to make sure are configured correctly for our emails to be considered legitimate. So it's a great tool to use. Um, there's a caveat though, the free version of this tool only allows you to perform a test so many times. Uh, I think it's within 24 hours. So I wouldn't hit this website too many times. Um, but because you're following a course, you hopefully won't have to run the test too many times within that time frame, and you should be okay. Okay, let's move on then. So open up your terminal, however you connect your Raspberry Pi. In my case, it's using a PowerShell, and SSH into your Raspberry Pi. So for me, I'm going to be using my SSH alias Pi as follows. And now I'm going to edit the main postfix configuration file. This is probably the most edited configuration file in this video series, so you're going to be familiar with this. I'm going to use the nano text editor. So if you wish to use nano as well, follow along with me. sudo nano slash etc slash postfix oops, slash main.cf. Okay. Once you've typed that in, press enter. Okay, so we're going to scroll down to the line that says my host name, just here, right at the bottom of the page. I'm going to press down on the keyboard one more time just to get the page to go down one notch. So this is the line that I'm going to edit that says my host name equals pi3.lan. Now this is the name of my Raspberry Pi, which I renamed in an earlier video. And this actually needs to be a fully qualified domain name. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to type in mail dot and then I'm going to add my domain name. So for you, you'll add your domain name here. For me, it's going to be single hyphen entity dot com. OK, so this shouldn't come as a surprise that we need this because when we were using Telnet to send an email, we were required to provide a EHLO or hello greeting, which was required to be a valid, um, fully qualified domain. 
If you remember, in fact, we made it so that our Raspberry Pi email server had to also uh, have emails coming in with a fully qualified domain name for their EHLO greeting, otherwise they would be rejected. It was one of the earliest things we did when we were changing the settings. So this is why we do it. It's required for the server to be considered legitimate. And if you recall, it's because it allows us to say that this um, email is coming from a source which has some traceability. It goes back to a person if you have to go that far. OK, with that done, we just need to add another line. And that's basically smtpd underscore banner equals and we make it equal to the my host name that we've just created above. So I'm going to say um, that's the dollar sign and I'm going to type in my host name. So this is the shell script syntax for referencing a variable. And all I'm doing is saying I wish smtpd underscore banner to be equal to the variable my host name, which we've set above. OK, excellent. With that done, that's the only change we need to make in here. We can save that and exit. OK, so that's going to bring to an end this video. What we've done is we've made the first important change to our postfix configuration so that we have a fully qualified domain name um, in our EHLO greeting. So that will, or at least should, increase our score slightly on our testing service. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do before I do finish the video is restart the postfix service. This is a standard practice that you should do every time you make a change to any configuration file. So I'm going to do sudo uh, service uh, postfix restart. And then as we've seen before, I can use the up arrow and change that to status just to make sure that nothing bad has happened when I change the settings, which they haven't. OK, so that actually will bring this video to a close. In the next video, and indeed the next few videos, we're going to continue through our journey of getting that score up to 10 out of 10. And then after we've got it up to 10 out of 10, I believe there will be one extra change to make which isn't reflected in that email testing service to finish off this video series, after which time you will have emails going to inboxes all over the world. So that's fantastic. So please do, if you find this video useful, like it and subscribe to my video course if you haven't already. I find that a fantastic metric for how many people are finding it useful. And as I mentioned, please do visit my Patreon account if you wish to support my work. There are plenty of videos on there which aren't on YouTube if you want to uh, get ahead <coughs> of the game. OK, thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.